Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Torsolini, and in the next two episodes, we're going to study the law of heat transfer, also known as Fourier's law. This episode is part one, so we'll cover this broadly to introduce the basics of how heat flows. And then in part two, we'll get more into the physics of Fourier's law. Nature strives for equilibrium, so heat always flows from something that is hot to something that is cold. Technically, heat is the process of transferring thermal energy from a higher temperature source to a lower temperature sink, but this process is commonly referred to as heat transfer. And so we often express this symbolically as Q to represent the amount of heat that has been transferred. It is measured in units of energy, such as BTUs or joules or watt hours. When we talk about the rate of heat transfer, we add this dot above the Q to represent the time rate of change of Q. This is called Q dot. Now the units are BTUs per hour or perhaps joules per second, which is the same as a watt. As we look into how this process occurs, there are three modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. Each of these requires a temperature difference from the hot source to the colder sink. Conduction is the kinetic energy through the motion of molecules. In a material, energy is exchanged from molecule to molecule without any macroscopic movement of those molecules. To illustrate this, we can think of a solid material, such as the metal pot in this image. The bottom of the pot is heated by the fire, and the inside of the pot becomes hot because of the conduction through the metal. The next mode of heat transfer is convection, which occurs through the motion of the molecules in a liquid or gas. Because these states of matter allow for more fluid motion compared to a solid material, warmer molecules typically become more spaced out and create pockets of lower density in the fluid which rise up towards the top. This is called natural convection. And as they move, they move energy with them. When these molecules cool down, they'll come closer together again and create higher density pockets in the fluid that fall to the bottom. If there is water in the pot and the bottom of the pot is hot, the water that is touching the hot pot gains a little bit of energy increasing its temperature. The water at the bottom of the pot gets hotter and becomes less dense and moves upward into the colder water in the pot, creating convection currents, as you can see depicted here. Radiation is the final mode of heat transfer, where thermal energy is carried by electromagnetic waves. No physical contact is required between the two temperature sources, which is required for conduction and convection. Looking at the illustration we've been using, radiation is shown as the heat from the fire. This is a bit of a complex example because the flames radiate heat up toward the pot, but the flames are also heating the air between the fire and the pot, which means there is convection occurring as well. A more straightforward example of radiation is if you think of the sun. Heat from the sun travels through empty space to the earth without any air or other material being used as a medium for the heat transfer. Now that we have defined those three distinct modes of heat transfer, that concludes part one of Fourier's law. In part two, we'll talk about how this applies to building science and we'll define each element of the heat transfer equation. Please let us know if you have any questions and as always, thanks for watching.